their education right here in Pittsburgh. Sure. And, and so we'll come, we'll come back to that and the dimensions of this effort. And for those of you who are just hearing about this incredible program that's in the makings for Friday night, we're driving people into bars all across the country <laughs> to get the, the Pittsburgh message. And we're going to, yeah, instead of just you and George going into the bar to celebrate, right, you're going to have a little company. And we want people all across the country to get the true picture of Pittsburgh. So we'll talk more about that. We're going to ask Mike about what are these days like. I thought it was fascinating today in the news conference when Ben and, and uh, Bill Cower both said, you know what, we just want to go play. We want to get out on that field. We, you know, this has been distracting enough. Let's just go at it. Hold on, coming right back. This is Nighttime. Yeah, they're opening my mic so I can apologize to all of you because they were setting the shot for this card and I whipped it away to uh, help the person from the graphics department who was down here taking shots of the rings because it is such a special thing. Honestly, I think we could sell tickets just to come in here and see these rings tonight. Uh, Mike Wagner brought his rings and this is a card that Paul Coatsworth, our director, you hear me talking to Paul, that's Polly, is Paul Coatsworth, our director, brought this card in. He was so crushed the last time Mike was here that he didn't have it with him, but he did bring it and had it with him tonight. And Mike, tell us about this card. That was, I think, the 25 year anniversary of the Super Bowl. So that would be, uh, and they uh, basically printed up cards for all the teams that had played in the previous Super Bowls. And this was the card that they produced that uh, I was in and uh, my old great teammate, Glenn Edwards. And uh, that was a pretty special play f uh, for our defense. I just got done uh, intercepting a pass from Roger Staubach in the fourth quarter down there in Miami. And uh, we went on, of course, to win that game. So uh, obviously we were pretty happy. Uh, and look at the hand holding that ball. So effortless. I'm going to flip this over here so we can see. <laughs> uh -oh. Look at that. Who's that young guy? That is so <laughs> cute. There you go. Okay, so did I do that right so you can see? Yeah, you can see that at home. All right, and so what does this have? Stats on it? And, and this card was not signed until just moments ago when Mike signed it on the set, we should say, because some people might have this card. And Paul says thank you to, to you, Mike. Um, some people might have this card and think, wait a minute, it doesn't have an autograph on it. Uh, that actually is not a, just a, you know, a, a printed autograph. That actually is something that Mike just gave to Paul. Uh, on, on, on the set here just moments ago. But th oh, that's a great picture. And thank you so much for talking us through that. And so it's a little bit of the copy on the back here. Um, let's see, just a little bit of the history of you, right? I College, would, West Illinois, so. NFL career, 10 years, drafted 11th round, 1971, born in Waukegan, Illinois, right? That's Where right. is that? That's north of Chicago. There's a big naval base up there, Great Lakes, and uh, home of Jack Benny. <laughs> oh, is that, well, that's a good claim to fame until you came along, right? <laughs> Home of Jack Benny. <laughs> Home of Jack Benny. Okay. And so I, I just want you to see, we've got the rings out here, and I'm sure we'll be taking more shots along the way here, but the art department uh, just brought down this black cloth so that they could get some good shots, and that is actually what I was fixing when I whipped the card out of the shot, so I'm deeply apologetic, and I'll put this down here. What, do you sell your autograph? I mean, how does that work for NFL players? And, and do you go on to some of those big fan fest things where you sell There's it? There's a combination of things that happen. Um, people do pay players like me to sign autographs on uh, different occasions. I think also there's a number of fans that realize that uh, for the most part, someone sends me a card or a picture with a self-addressed stamped envelope, I usually return it with, you know, signing it. Uh, yeah, it it's to me, uh, uh, if I can make some money off it, you know, usually s some promoter is trying to make some money off it, wants to pay athletes to come and show up. Sure, I can make up some, uh, make some spending money. Uh, but, uh, you know, around town here, particularly if someone comes up to me with a picture or something like that and asks me for an autograph, I'll be glad to do it. We were over at uh, the Strip District uh, last week for a big pep rally, and there was thousands of people in there, and they want, some of them wanted autographs. And in that situation, we might decline because if we start, do then we're not, we're not going to keep everybody happy, mm -hmm. but uh, really try to accommodate Steeler fans, that's for sure. That's great.
And and so you work for Oxford Development now. Right. Day job is what? Day job is I'm in their brokerage group, a commercial brokerage. We buy, sell, help people rent, lease uh, office space. And is there an impact for you uh, when the Steelers are in the Super Bowl? Uh, is there an impact? You know, yes. Bob O'Connor came out this week and said, I thought those were great comments where he said, make the extra sales call, seal the deal, see if you can't sell more this week. That's real practical advice, and they're probably folks are probably hearing it from their bosses. But I thought, you know, that's good. That's good and practical, pragmatic, and takes advantage of the moment. And coming from the mayor, that's cool. Right. Well, there's a number of advantages. Uh, uh, tongue in cheek, uh, most of the calls have come up. Do you have any Super Bowl tickets? Can you get me any Super Bowl <laughs> tickets? Uh, do you, so do you here, get so, tickets? I should ask. Uh, the Roonies do not call up the retired players and offer them tickets. Um, I'm sure that if I would uh, make a request for maybe two tickets to personally go to the game, that maybe Dan Art would accommodate me. But it's not like an NFL thing. They don't. No, the current players have the rights to buy two tickets. Uh, the current players for Steelers uh, uh, can buy 13 and they're given two. So it's a very tight, very tight thing. And, and I know some of my teammates, my old teammates, are scrambling, still scrambling, trying to get tickets for friends and, and even for family. It, it, it's a tough thing. It's are you going to go? I am not going. You are not going. No. Was that a hard decision? or? No, not too hard. Uh, if I would go, I think I have a bunch of family members that would be uh, would want to go, and sure. I can't pick one over the other. And um, right. so you need your own Bettis's mom to navigate this with you, <laughs> right? I mean, did you hear that she set up the the lottery rules for Jerome's family and friends? Oh, they no. had to attend three games during the regular season in order to be eligible to get their name in the lottery. <laughs> I thought that was a great idea. She had a little qualifier there. Right. But, but as far as going to the game, I, uh, I was hurt for the last Super Bowl, our 79 championship, and I sat in the stands at the Rose Bowl. And I'll tell you what, it's not a place that's fun. And, and quite honestly, um, I, I was just a nervous wreck. Uh, and even last week, uh, the game, the championship game, I was walking around the living room and jumping around. I just had a lot of anxiety. Sure. And I think, you know, if you want to talk a little bit, we can at some point in time, because I, I was really feeling some of the stuff when I played. You know, what, what you right now you're dealing with, the players is really kind of controlling their emotions and their anxiety. They have the mechanics, they're putting the game plan in place, but they're now, you know, they're out of, the, out of town. They're basically on the road for a week, you know. Strange, strange bedrooms, strange food, different, a whole different environment, media. And they're trying to, as Bill Cowher might say, it's just another normal week. Well, guess what? It's not. And so they're trying to control all that, the players, the coaches, everybody, okay? And guess what? The fans aren't treating it normally, and the media is not treating it normally. Case in point, look, we're talking about it here tonight. It's become a big topic. So it's, it's really, from my standpoint, I'm probably, you know, if someone said, come on up to the game, Mike, you know, I would probably go, but I'm probably more comfortable sitting in my living room right now watching the game. And, and I want to watch it closely, yeah. Are you getting any, like, do people, I, people just m want to call you this week and talk to you, right? They're, they're going to want to just, and does that help in business? Because you're you. Well, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, a lot of people in my industry know, you know, that, that I'm an old stealer. Uh, some of them uh, will bring it up more so as a team has been successful here going into uh, this week's game. Uh, but it's business. Uh, it sure can hurt, that's for sure. You know, uh, Oxford's a wonderful company. Uh, we're here to help promote uh, the city of Pittsburgh. I, I make my living now over the success of uh, people investing in the city of Pittsburgh. Right. And I can tell you, Ann, we've, we've had an upturn in the last couple of weeks in the number of calls that we get, the amount of activity that we're seeing from an economic development standpoint. Uh, folks that uh, we don't get to talk to every week are calling us, and uh, these are site selectors, these are real estate brokers, these are folks that, that we like to talk to. And, you know, this is, one, this is where Mike and I are on the same page because, uh, you know, his business in Oxford Development is exactly the kind of company that we work with to, to see what type of real estate uh, absorption we have down in the, in the downtown market in uh, a number of our, uh, the counties around the region, all 10 counties. Uh, where we do economic development work and and we have seen an upturn in in that and, and the mayor called me and said how's it going you know are you making those calls out there to those real estate brokers and and, and developers are we seeing activity and I said mayor we're actually we are seeing an upturn in activity and I think that really does say a lot for uh, the morale and the upbeat nature you know uh, there is a study uh, that was 
uh, published a couple of years ago, 2002, by some University of Maryland professors, and they looked at what is the effect on the economy to not just the, the host city that actually hosts the Super Bowl, but what is the effect on the economy to the winning team? What happens after the game? And uh, their, their research showed that there was actually a per capita income increase in the winning cities from 1969 through 1998, the period of the study, that said approximately $140 per capita increase in net uh, per capita income uh, for years after the win. So, you know, you, you say, why? And they said their result was that there was an increased worker productivity, that people actually felt better about what they were doing, they had higher morale, and they worked harder on their jobs, and therefore they made more money. So we think that this is great. Um, and uh, we're seeing an upturn in activity. Now hold on, we'll take a break to make some money for this television station. I'm reminded by Paul, so hold on. And when we come back, we'll talk about the psychology of it, both, as Bill Cowher said, to keep this as much a normal week as possible. What's the psychology for the athletes? And then what's the psychology? What do we want people to think about Pittsburgh? What is that messaging that you're trying to get out in this broadcast on Friday night? How important is it? And it is funny because just driving in tonight, it's a Wednesday night, much more traffic out tonight than on any other regular Wednesday. I think people are out, they're buying, they're doing, they're, they're going places. It's just a fun week in Pittsburgh, isn't it? Great night, and thanks for joining us. This is Night Talk. It's all luck. Carmen. All right, well, it's loud and wonderful in here. Albie's in the house as well. Uh, you're looking again at the rings, and uh, we'll give you that shot as I tell you that this is Night Talk, and we're talking about this incredible Super Bowl week, the lead up to it. Of course, will next week, if we win, be Super Bowl week, too? Yes, it will be. We don't care. We're going to glom all these weeks together and um, just celebrate. Just now, for now, just being there, right? We're not anticipating and projecting. We're just hoping and praying, right? All right, we're coming back in just a moment. This is Night Talk. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we could charge admission into this studio tonight <laughs> because the rings are all out uh, down here at the other end of the set. And look who's trying them on now. I'm going to wear the ring for a segment. If that's all right. Oh, don't be asking me. I ought to be asking the gentleman yeah. sitting next to you. I wore his number in high school, number 23. Mike was my inspiration. I, I was the first Be Like Mike to wear number 23, and that guy from Chicago right. took, <laughs> took, took my number and my, you know, all of it. By taking your number, <laughs> look what it got me. I have a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> right, isn't that nice? It, it is gorgeous. You know, and one of the fun things, in case you have not been to the Heinz History Center, into their sports wing, they have a try on a Super Bowl ring. I'm trying to remember, what it, what is it like? It's a, it's just a chunk of metal, right? It has the weight of the Super Bowl ring, but I did that and I thought, this is just so cool because kids especially, the opportunity to like feel what a Super Bowl ring would feel like. Have you seen that, Mike? They have it a little, no, I have, I, one of the exhibits the there. You know, oh yeah, right, well, I'm but you know, Miss Pathetic here, really? Yeah. Miss Pathetic. I'm always working over there. I'm like, whoa, isn't that incredible? Because it, it has such weight. That's a cool thing for kids. If you haven't taken your kids there, there's so much to see in that wing and then especially to be able to try on uh, a, a simulated ring. It's just fun. Albie I Oxenreiter. I knew something was up when I came into the studio and there were armed guards outside. <laughs> I knew that something was up. <laughs> Usually that means there's food on the other side of the doors and no, they're keeping the news department You don't out. wear these on a regular basis? You wear this one, the, the, the fourth ring. I usually wear the fourth ring. It's the smallest, most comfortable, and it, uh, when you have diamond all this stuff, it, they tend to tear up your pants. You know, <laughs> the problems of wearing a Super Bowl ring. I know I'm not gonna get much I sympathy. Love this. <laughs> this is good stuff. But uh, they snag and stuff. But uh, you know, uh, this ring, the third ring with all the bling, I think is the one the fans r really love to see. They like to see any of the rings, and uh, this is the smallest ring, and it's the most comfortable to wear. Now, I, I heard that if the Steelers are to make another ring, it would be 75000 a ring. That's what they said. Do you have to pay for, Mike, did you have to pay well, for these? At the I would be surprised because I thought the league had a, uh, a spending restriction on what the team can spend on a ring, and it's way, way below that. That's that would be a green that. cap, the, right? The league will give them so much money, but that they, were, they would cost 75000 They would have five diamonds. I would be shocked. I mean, uh, the replacement value in these rings, I, Rocky got, got three of his rings, I think, the value... It was like uh, a little over $30,000 for all three of them. Wow. Yeah. 
So I, I, that would surprise me if they're going to spend that kind of money. I'm not saying that they won't, and, but that would surprise me. I'm doing a story tomorrow on one for the thumb. And that, of course, is the famous picture with uh, Joe Green, I guess, was the right. spokesman at that time with four of the rings, and he had the thumb empty and waiting. So maybe 26 years after, uh, you know, my, my buddy Jack Wolf came up with that idea, maybe finally it will... Uh, it will turn into something. But, but you know, okay, it's just a little bit of, of question here from a girl, so give me some space on this. But <laughs> is it really one, it would be one for the thumb for the city, but obviously not for any of the players who have the other four because they're not on the current team. So are we accurate in saying one for the thumb, or do we just mean for the Steelers, for the team, for the city? It's just a figure. It's just an expression. But although there are four full-time employees of the Steelers who would get a fifth ring, Oh, that's cool. Who are they? Um, I Joe think Gordon. Joe Green would be one. Uh, Joe Gordon would not. Joe Green no. would be one. Bob McCartney, their video coordinator, would be one. Wow. Uh, Dick, Dick Hoke, Hoke would, be, say, would yeah. be the third. And maybe Dan Rooney yeah. would be the fourth. Oh, that would um, be neat. There yeah. it is. One for the thumb in 81. Now, that was way back when. Where did this come from, Kristen? Good job. Oh, it's Paul. Paul Coates were. I saw that on my way in here. Oh, Had it not been for cool. the armed guard, I might have stolen it. And what does it mean to have not gotten one for the thumb? It means we weren't quite good enough. <laughs> but does it bum you out? I mean, to this day, does it feel as if something... I, I don't know. I don't... You know, uh, that was my ninth year in the league. And... Uh, no, actually, that was my tenth year in the league, wasn't it? It was my last year... Um, the team wasn't as strong. I, I don't think, I don't think any of the players said, "Geez, we should have won the Super Bowl this year." We, you know, we won in '79, and, and in '80, uh, we, we gave it a great effort. But we just, we were a little bit older and a little bit banged up. It's not like a Marino ache. Mm -hmm. No, when you have four, it's kind of hard to be upset about not getting the fifth. Uh, you know, at the time, now, you know, Noel and the Rooney's probably, you know, they, 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 they wanted to win it. Uh, we want with. You know, not saying we didn't want to win it, but uh, never think about it. I mean, that's the first time someone's ever asked me that question. I never really thought about it. Now, your um, best um, team, they say, could have been the team that was going for three the, after the first two Super Bowls. The what would have been the 76 team, which would have been Super Bowl eleven, right. uh, when Rocky and Franco both got hurt and Reggie Harrison had to start in the backfield. That and wonder. that that could have been the, the, the one that got away. But four is pretty special. There are some I'm with, saying, yeah. Right. I mean, it's, uh, I think, one for the thumb. I, I think in some ways getting one for the thumb, although it certainly would be exciting over the next couple of weeks, what are we going to talk about when they get one for the thumb? This Second the, hand. This will be the first of the next four. <laughs> well, you know, for the new guys. Well, well yeah. what's going to happen, right, and what's going to happen as soon as they win, you know, you're going to get about a day of celebration, and then, well, are you going to repeat? You know, right. if you talk about the team, that's what's going to happen. Right. I mean, uh, if Cowher is anything like Noel, you'll say, enjoy the moment, and, uh, you know, we, let's do it again. And, uh, you know, they have a parade maybe and a little bit of celebration, and they'll start planning to win a second ring. Well, okay? because Roethlisberger is so young. But that's just the game of right. sports and football. It's just like business, okay? Yeah. Do a little, there'll be a party, and then uh, let's, let's get, back get right hungry in. again, right? <laughs> All right, hold on. Coming right back in just a moment. This is Night Talk. In studio here, Mike Langley next to me. He is the CEO of the Allegheny Conference. Mike Wagner is next to him. Pittsburgh Steelers, 1971 to 1984 rings front and center on this set tonight. We're honored. Albie Oxenreiter in studio here. I'm going to make it ox on the clock. I'm just saying, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say it on the air because I do think it's a great idea. You're on the 10 o'clock news now. And well, I should say welcome to Thank you. you. Thank you. We're it's so good to glad be here. you're here. Yeah, it's good to be here. And we're vets from WTAE together. So, so Way back a long in the day. time. That's right. And, yeah. And Paul Coatsworth from, from TAE, our director as well. So uh, time has moved on, and it's a pleasure to be your colleague again. Thank Congratulations you. I appreciate that, to you. It's good to be here. I'm glad you let me in here with these great rings. And, and we're going to be counting the rings when you walk out the door, though. That's all right, hold on. So Mike Langley was talking about the economic development impacts of all of this, and he said that there's this study that when there are Super Bowls, and, uh, when you win the one, Super Bowl. Right, won by cities, that productivity increases, and then everyone makes more money, like a rising tide lifts all boats, right? All right, 
Run the math on that. Well, uh, the study said $140 per capita increase uh, for a winning Super Bowl team, and, and that would be a persistent number for a number of years. And you say, well, gee, $140 per person, that's not a lot. But if you add it up, if you say in our region now we have close to 2.5 million people in our uh, metropolitan area, you're talking 350 to 400 million dollars of economic impact, positive ec economic impact uh, to to our economy, to our retailers here in the region. The Steelers blast of broadcast that's going out from the Hard Rock Cafe on Friday night. This is so cool. Eight to nine o'clock, going right. out to how many Steeler bars across the country? 1,300. 1,300. 1300. What's that fee going? What is that show going to be? It's going to be a combination. It'll be it'll be highlights of the season. It'll be. Uh, positive discussions about what's going on in, in Pittsburgh, what's happened in Pittsburgh since the last Super Bowl in the last 10 years. You think, gee, things are different in this region and in this city uh, than they were 10 years ago. We've had so many improvements that we can really celebrate, and we're going to talk about that nationwide. And it's all about, it's called Bring It Home. It's Bring Home the Victory. Bring yourselves back home to Pittsburgh for reunions and for homecomings. It's bring business back to Pittsburgh. So it's all about bringing it back, and we're uh, we're really excited about it. All right, and so give a quick rundown of just a few of the most spectacular things that are going on around town. Everyone's using their creativity here. Oh yeah, well certainly we've seen. You know, I think everybody's beating everybody on who's got the largest Steeler banner, and I think uh, PNC is still holding the record there on the first side with their banner. Um, and we were talking about the fact that. The Carnegie and, and the Natural History Museum uh, have created, their entomologists have brought out thousands and thousands of black and gold butterflies and have created this wonderful display of Super Bowl XL out of butterflies. I mean, it's just amazing what's going on. We've got dinosaurs with terrible towels <laughs> hanging out of their mouths. We've got Franco Harris and the Immaculate Reception out at the airport area now, along with George Washington to commemorate the History Center. It's just amazing what's going on in town. Hold on one second. We're going to come back in just a moment. Yeah, Steeler, Pennsylvania, right? That's Washington, right? They renamed? Right. right. All right, back in just a moment with prediction scores and Albie's take on the big game. This is Night Talk. Mike Langley, CEO of the Allegheny Conference on the Economic Development of Football and this going to the Super Bowl business. Mike Wagner, Pittsburgh Steelers, 71 to 80. Albie Oxenreiter, WPXI and PCNC News. Uh, and now a wonderful addition to the sports department. And so let's talk about this game. Mike, first to you. What do you see? I see a victory for the Steelers. I see, um, I think they should take control of this game early. And uh, I'm looking at, uh, I was just thinking about 34 17. 34, we're going to do it. You're going to come back next week, 34 17. And you covered the spread the last time you made a prediction, as Mike Langley <laughs> noted. All right, Mike? 28 21. 28 21 Steelers. Steelers. Anybody think they have any, if they're going to have any difficulty with anything, what would it be? I think if the offensive line for Seattle plays really well, you know, it could neutralize our defense to some extent. Uh, but I'm not really sure if the defense can hold up against our offense. We smile. We smile at that, Albie. 27 13, Steelers. 27 13. Wow. Uh, why? Well, I, th I think Mike's right. You, you try to shut down Sean Alexander early, put the pressure on the quarterback uh, who's had a great year, but uh, get an early lead run 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 and don't turn it over and I think if they stick by that and if they put a lot of guys up front let Ben do what he did in the last few playoff games and uh, open it up a little bit but if they get an early lead I think the Steelers can kind of control the tempo from the beginning anything coming out of Detroit that has you all worried in any way about them you know are they distracted is there messaging that makes you say oh my god their head's not in this game they're a very well balanced team and we don't know how good they really are the NFC has been kind of thought of as the weak link in the conference, the two conferences right now. So I would be wary of that. I think the Steeler players have somewhat alluded to in some of their comments. These guys look fast. These guys play well. You don't get to the Super Bowl without being good. Mike could speak to this better than anybody, but I think the Steelers are, are incredibly loose and focused. At least they were in Pittsburgh before they left. If they can maintain those, you know, those two things. Were you guys loose before the Super Bowls? Do you remember that? I think we tried to stay, uh, we were probably loose, uh, the environment and just, you know, not, not too much change except just the travel and being on the road. 
The problem is the adrenaline before the game and a long halftime and just the, what goes on around you during the game. And the sweater. Real quickly, grab that sweater. Look at this. We want to show this, this on the way out. You have five Steelers seconds sweater. here. Wow. Flip it around. His and aunt here. knitted this. Is this incredible? And who? This is Aunt Jackie in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Total